the Lord, mighty prophet of the Lord. Amen. Now, uh, well, uh, Pastor Sophie, the Lord has spoken with me. The Lord Jehovah, Jehovah Adonai. The Lord Jehovah Eli. The Lord my God. The Lord Jehovah Elion. The Lord Most High. Jehovah Ganan. The Lord our Defender. He has spoken with me on this day in a very, very stunning way, in a very, a very, very major way. And in this conversation, the King of Heaven, he took me to a place. Uh, yesterday, as I was having a meeting with a section of the Council of Bishops at the Riverside Drive, we were having a meeting on the coming ordination of bishops, the preparations, the modalities on the ground, and all the things that need to be put in place for that very special day of consecration and enthronement of the bishops of the Lord that will take place uh, this coming weekend. And as I sat before a section of bishops mainly drawn from the church in Nairobi and Nakuru, and then uh, I fell asleep. I fell asleep on the chair right in front of them. And as I was asleep, Jehovah El Gibor, the mighty God, he took me to a place and as I was walking, I was coming towards the junction. I was coming towards the junction yesterday when I was sitting right in front of the bishops, a section of the National Council of Bishops, mainly drawn from Nairobi and the church in Nakuru. And I was stolen in sleep. The Lord snatched me away in front of them. And I found myself walking. And as I was walking, the Lord was walking on my right hand side as he always does. And he alerted me that we were approaching a junction. And then I woke up, but I spoke junction, junction. And as I woke up, then I asked the bishops what the Lord had said. And they said he spoke about a junction. So, well, uh, this past night, the Lord again took a walk with me to speak with me about a very, very important event coming to the earth. And as the Lord walked with me, we were approaching the junction, the same junction the Lord was talking about this past night. And as we approached the junction, and then I had some people in that place, I could see some people. I had some people waiting there to receive me. Some of them were people, senior people in government, the leader, the security people of government. And there were a lot of other people, the saints from the church that were waiting for me. So the security people were observing public safety there as they waited for me to get there. And as I walked, the Lord alerted me that we are approaching the junction, the same junction he had shown me earlier. And as we were approaching the junction, I could see people. There appeared people from this ministry because they had covered their hair. The ladies had covered their hair and had dressed long clothes down to their feet and uh, all the way down covering their feet. They were dressed very holy. And uh, they were celebrating the fact that the man of God had come. So there was a big situation there. Welcome, man of God. And they were singing like that. There was a situation. They saw me coming. And so there was that situation. They were very happy that I had come. And then right before I got to the junction, before I got to the junction, then all of a sudden, the Lord instructed me to gain contact with them. 
And then I decided now to walk to them. When I walked toward them to gain contact with them, that is the time when all of a sudden, again, let me repeat this. This past night, the Lord spoke with me. And in this conversation, the Lord walked with me to a junction. And this is the same junction I had seen yesterday as I was meeting a section of the National Council of Bishops. And as I approached this junction, I could see holy people worshipping there. The ladies had their hair covered totally. And uh, the men were dressed holy also. And the ladies had these long dressings covering all their feet. You could not see their feet. And they were celebrating, welcome men of God, as I was walking towards the junction. And the men were there also. And then there were some government leaders also there with them waiting to receive me at that place. And so as I walked towards this junction, the government security people are here to keep the safety of that place, waiting with these people. And then they saw me. So there was a lot of excitement that took place. And then the Lord instructed me to gain contact with these people that were waiting to receive me at the junction. The blessed saints, holy, covered their hair. Their dresses were long. You could barely see their, you cannot see their feet. Celebrating the fact that the Lord had brought me there to them. So when I now gained contact with them, walked towards them like this, then all of a sudden, as I reached at them, like that, they were taken up into heaven. In less than a second, they were taken up into heaven right in our eyes. I need to repeat this again. Uh, yesterday, as I was meeting a section of the National Council of Bishops, mainly drawn from the church in Nairobi, and then uh, also part of the church in Nakuru. And in that meeting at the Riverside Drive, I was sitting right in front of the bishops, and we were discussing regarding this coming ordination of the bishops, the consecration of the bishops of the National Council of Bishops of this mega ministry of Jehovah. And as I sat before them, I fell asleep. All of a sudden, I fell asleep in front of the bishops yesterday as we were discussing the modalities, logistics, preparations, and readiness for the consecration and the ordination service that is taking place this coming weekend for all the bishops of the National Council of Bishops. And at that place, as I fell asleep yesterday, the Lord all of a sudden took me to a place, and right in front of me was a junction. The Lord was walking with me on my right-hand side, and he showed me a junction, and he announced to me, he said, look, the junction. So as we were walking towards the junction, and then in that sleep in front of the bishops, I remember I spoke audibly, audibly, the words of the Lord. I said, the junction. And then I woke up. So when I woke up, then I asked the bishops, what did the Lord say? They said they heard the Lord say, junction, the junction. I was approaching the junction. However, the night then, yesterday, after that meeting, when I came back the night, then the Lord God Almighty, the Father, visited with me in a very tremendous way to discuss with me, to talk with me about this very tremendous historic event that is about to take place on the earth. And in that very major conversation, he put me on the road again, and he was walking on my right-hand side and speaking with me about this junction. So I could see the junction right ahead of me, and I saw that there were a lot of people waiting at the junction, and they were celebrating. They were dressed very holy. I see the women have covered their hair totally, and they covered all their body, even their feet. You could not see. They were dressed very holy. And the men there were also dressed very holy. And then the government security people were there also to keep security at that junction, at that event, because there were so many people there. And then uh, as I walked, there was this, there is this particular group that was really at the junction itself, at the junction itself. And so uh, as I walked, then the Lord asked me to gain contact with them. 
and they were shouting and celebrating and joyous and singing and worshiping, very happy that the Lord had sent me to them. And so as the Lord commanded me by voice to gain contact with these people, when I just moved right this ahead like this to gain contact with them, to celebrate with them that now is the moment to hear about the coming of the Messiah. When I just moved right in front like this, in obedience to the words of the Father speaking on my right hand side, to gain contact with them, then all of a sudden, whoop, they were taken away into heaven in a very shocking event that really stunned everybody that was around there, those that remained. All of a sudden, as I moved to gain contact with them, whoop, they were all taken up into heaven. And I remember people started looking for them everywhere. The whole country said, where are they? Where are they? Have they really gone to heaven? Have they really gone to heaven? Let's look for them. Where are they? Have they really gone to heaven? It was a big shock. So people were talking that there. They were in shock as they were screaming and saying, boy, they have gone to heaven. These people have just gone to heaven like that. They have been taken up into the rapture, right? So this is the event that the Lord presented to me this past night. And so I see that I come to a place and a junction. There were people there, holy people, holy saints, dressed very holy and celebrating the fact that the Lord had sent me to them. And when I went to gain contact with them like that, they were all taken up into heaven in a shocking event. And then people started going around, even the people there, the security people saying, how amazing, this is a mighty miracle. Everybody was saying, this is a wonder. The wonder has just happened in our eyes. They were taken up into the glorious kingdom of heaven right in my eyes. And so these are the times we live in. The Bible says in the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. I'll read from King James, he says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven in a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse 17 of First Thessalonians chapter 4. He goes on to say, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18, he says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amplified says, verse 16, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry of summons, with a shout of the archangel, and with a blast of the trumpet of God, and those who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. Verse 17, he says, Then we, the living ones who remain on the earth, shall simultaneously be caught up along with the resurrected dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so always through the eternity of the eternities, we shall be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words. The New American Standard says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Verse 17, he says, Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another 
with these words. The NIV says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Verse 18, he says, Therefore encourage one another with these words. Comfort one another with these words. That is the blessed assurance that the Lord left for the church when he ascended, when he was raptured upon the completion his public, of his public ministry here on the earth. He was taken up in the eyes of the church, the apostles, the disciples. But right now, the Lord is saying in this conversation that that blessed assurance is about to come to fruition. It's about to climax. We are about to reach a place where now the holy blessed church that has endured the abusiveness of this world, the wickedness of this world, the blackmail of this world, the confusion of this world, the disdain of this world, the evil of this hour, that church that shall endure these things and rest her comfort on this blessed assurance, not wavering in righteousness, firm in holiness, by standing with God, regardless of the circumstances of the day. He's saying that moment of blessedness and recompense, to recompense, to compense, to reward, that moment of rewarding the holy, righteous church is drawn nigh. I have seen this tremendous visitation of the Lord. The Father is walking with me. He is speaking from my right hand side. And as I walk with him, he shows me the junction ahead of us. And as I see the junction, I look at the junction, I see people celebrating the fact that the Lord, he has sent me there. They themselves, anyhow, are not aware that God the Father is walking on my right hand side. And then the Father instructs me by voice to go and gain contact with them. Holy people, holy saints, dressed holy, righteous people, helped by the Holy Spirit to choose righteousness, to have zero tolerance to sin. So as I walk towards them, the women are well dressed with the covered, the hair covered, so they are holy. Their body is totally covered down, and they are worshipping and they are celebrating the fact that the Lord, He has sent me to them. Little did they know that the God the Father was actually walking on my right hand side and speaking to me audibly. So when the Lord commanded me and instructed me to gain contact with them, as I walked towards them like this, whoop, they are taken up into heaven in a shocking event that has never, ever happened on this earth. So these are the tremendous times we live in. I remember before the meeting in Menengai in Akuru, when the Lord had spoken with me prior to that meeting too. And he's shown me that meeting and the tremendous, the shocking, the, the unbelievable visitation that will take place there, including the fire of Elijah that will come over the meeting above the altar. So before that meeting, when the Lord came to speak with me about that event, and I remember very well the Lord showed me in that dream that he would lift me up into that fire. But when I get to that fire, there was someone else with a trumpet. There was an angel, I cannot describe the detail, but he had a trumpet with his wings. So he flew into that fire. So there were two people. He was there and I was there in that fire. And that's why at that time I thought that the Lord would take the church at the meeting in Menengai. I thought the Lord would take the church at the meeting in Menengai. But you saw the tremendous historic visitation that took place there, the fire, the cloud of God, the rain that came down, that was called down, the men of God called down the rain from heaven, and rain came. So that was a moment when I thought the church would be taken away. The instant visitation too, I thought that was another moment where the church would go. 
when the Lord showed it to me before it be held. But now he showed the energy, a place at which I'm going to meet people. They are at a junction. And this time around, I see them taken up and some people remain. So, well, the Messiah is coming. This is he about whom the scriptures wrote and said, I shall send my messenger ahead of you, a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, for the coming of the Messiah is in hand. The Lord again has spoken with me. Now, um, when I came to you earlier on, I spoke about this very, very important visitation that is coming to the earth, uh, in which uh, the Lord Jehovah is walking on my right hand side, God the Father, the Godhead Himself. Jehovah Magen, Jehovah my shield, Jehovah Maoz, Jehovah my fortress, Jehovah my sea, the Lord my refuge, Jehovah my faulty, the Lord my deliverer, Jehovah Miss Kabi, Jehovah the Lord my high tower. And when I came to you earlier, I spoke about the Lord walking on my right hand side. And in this visitation that is coming to the earth, he announces to me about a junction that is ahead of us as we walked. And then as we approach the junction, there were people there that were waiting and they were happy that the Lord had sent me to them. And they were celebrating that now they would have to hear, they would get to hear about the coming of the Messiah, the message on the glorious coming of the Messiah, the King. And uh, then the Father instructs me by voice to go and gain contact with them, to go to them. So I walk towards them, and as I approach like this, about to contact, to speak to them, then immediately, in that way, they are taken up. They are all snatched into the glorious kingdom of God in less than one second. I myself, as the Lord was speaking this to me, I have already lived to see this, of course. But at that place, I also became stunned. I was also very shocked at how fast it happened. In less than a second, and he snatched them, the people that were waiting for me at the junction to receive me. And they were singing and worshiping the Lord and celebrating with the Lord that now I have been sent to them. They would have to hear about the glorious coming of the Messiah. And uh, at this hour, they are snatched immediately. I try to gain contact with them. They are snatched away into heaven. And it became a big sign and wonder, a big shock. Everybody around began to be in awe, shock, wonder, fear, trembling, and confusion also. They were in big uh, fear at that moment as to these people have been snatched into heaven right in their eyes, right in their sight as they saw. So this became the biggest sign and wonder ever to behold at this hour. And so after this then, everyone else was looking for them. They were like, is it really true? They have gone in our eyes like this. And they looked for them everywhere, and they did not find them. Now, in this visitation, I know that right now we are awaiting the glorious coming of the Messiah, and the church is sitting really on the brink of eternity. We are sitting at a place where any moment the church can be taken into eternity. However, in this conversation, I'm not aware, I'm not sure whether this happens at rapture or just this is just one of the signs and wonders that would happen with this servant of the Lord 
as he executes the agenda of the Lord, the ministry of the Lord on the earth here. I do not know whether this event happens at rapture itself or globally as in rapture has taken place, or this is an event that will take place as a sign and wonder that follow the ministry of he that speaks with you. I do not know whether this is going to be the global event, the rapture of the church, or a sign and wonder that will happen when he sends me to a place. And as I contact those people, then that becomes one of the major hallmarks of this ministry. However, the beautiful thing about it is that it is prudent, the message is clear, and it's prudent to us to understand that it's always beneficial for us to be prepared and ready at any time for the glorious coming of the kingdom of God, for our snatching away into the glorious kingdom of God. And you see that in that event, when it takes place, the man of God remains on the earth. And after that, I did not share a little bit more. After that, I, sh I go now, I go into a place where... Um, there is buying and selling. And as the buying and selling takes place, the Lord has allowed me to release a little bit more now of this conversation to you. Uh, I go into a place where there is buying and selling. I wash my hands. In that place, someone was giving me the hot water for washing the hands, touching the tap. And then it's like a supermarket, and uh, there is buying and selling. And the people I was with are people now that do not like the Messiah. And now they are not happy with the Messiah. Then there was hostility. The Lord made me understand from these people towards the worshiping of Jesus. And there is selling. It's a supermarket. And I can see very clearly that uh, there was fear. People feared when she, there was a lady at the end of the teller, she's selling, paying, people are paying money and so forth. And there is a row, a line of people in that supermarket. And uh, there is hostility towards Jesus. And uh, so she leaves the teller, the machine. She's dressed very badly. She leaves the machine, the teller's machine, and she goes to rebuke a certain group, a certain lady with a friend and somebody that were talking aloud about Jesus. So there's serious hostility against the Lord Jesus. And there's selling going on there, and that selling is restricted. So there was fear from many people that were there whether it would be acceptable for them to buy, whether they would be allowed to buy. So we understand very well what the Lord is saying. Again, that after the snatching away the Lord has now allowed me to share with you a little bit more of this conversation. And uh, now the earth changes. And there is now a place where people are buying things. I guess that is your common store, common shop. And uh, there is a problem with buying that not everybody is allowed to buy. And there is this lady, she wears a tight trouser. She lives where she is telling. She's the one who is taking the money and processing people out of the supermarket, she gets away from there. She walks away as people are in the line and goes and rebukes some Christians, tells them, no, you stop making noise here. You cannot worship here. And I see a certain lady pastor also seated at a chair, and some people rebuke her. They appear more like Muslim people, but they rebuke her. So I've seen also that scenario after the snatching of the church. So that tells you very, very clearly that this event is indeed the rapture of the church. It's the global rapture of the church, the snatching away of the church. I have also seen those who did not make it, people that remained. So it's going to be very important at this hour in church for all those that prescribe, that submit to the glorious gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of repentance and holiness. It's going to be very important that 
they be wise enough to prepare and live in the fear of the Lord. The careless living, careless Christian living cannot apply now. It will not work now. The Lord is sounding a very serious alarm to the church that all believers may now prepare for the kingdom of glory, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of Jehovah, the kingdom of Yahweh, my master, my father, my sender, my Lord, the one that was walking with me in this conversation and visitation. Well, uh, now, beyond that, the church now has to prepare. Everyone has to repent and always keep a repentant heart. Stay away from sin and have a zero tolerance to sin that the Lord Jesus may harvest as many, many, many from this earth because it seems that the rapture of the church is near. I'm also quite uh, very shocked and surprised that I could wait since last night and reach this night with this conversation without the fear that it would take place in the middle of the day. But I can see very clearly that I remain on the earth when that event of the rapture takes place. Shalom. Thank you.